Hello, this is Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I am really excited because my friend Michelle from Scrap Secrets and Tara from Mayhem Crafty Cards invited me as a new YouTuber, which is amazing and overwhelming and such an honor to participate in their halfway to 1K YouTube block hop. So if you do a search for hashtag halfway to 1K, you will get the links to all of the folks that are participating in the hop. There's not too many of us, but I hope that you'll go through the hop because there are prizes and it's going to be a lot of fun. The theme is celebrations and that's what we're doing. We're celebrating their milestone of having at least 500 subscribers. And I know that they're beyond that at this point, but I'm so proud of them for hitting that milestone. It's amazing. I hope that I get there one day too. So we are going to make a fantastic card today with a stencil set that I have had in my stash for a little while and I haven't had a chance to use and I'm so excited to finally use it. So this is from Erin Lee Creative. This is the tie dye layering stencil and there's three pieces and we're going to layer them all together and hopefully at the end it's going to look totally amazing. So let's get started. We're going to take a piece of cardstock. I'm going to push these off to the side like that. And I'm going to take a piece of cardstock with a bit of washi tape underneath it, um, just so that we hold it in place. I'm going to use the tape against my fingers a little bit just to make it a little less sticky. For this first stencil, we can actually tape it to the bottom, but let's keep it easy and just tape it underneath so that it doesn't get in the way at all. And you can see on here, I hope you can see it, it says layer one. And we're gonna stick that on here, just like that. We'll bring it to the edge and I'll tape this down. Just like that. And I'm gonna start with some wilted violet, distress ink. I want it to have that a translucency to it. And that's what these do. The Distress Oxides have an opaque property to them because there's pigment in it. But I want these to be bright and translucent, whereas the Oxides, which I love, get to look a little bit chalkier. So I'm going to just use my cottontail brush here and just bring this color around and then I'm going to shift it to picked raspberry and you can see that this is super quick to do and you can use whatever kind of blending tool that you have. So I'm close that up and I always keep my brushes for my distress inks separate from my oxides because you don't want that pigment property to wind up in your inks because then you're turning that into sort of an oxide. I love these colors together. They're so vibrant. Oops, there we go. Shifted it just a little bit. There, that's layer one. So I'm gonna pull this off to the side and I'm gonna remove my washi tape and then we're gonna go to layer two. Oops, this is three. This is layer two. And we're gonna just line this up just like that. What's nice about these stencils is that they are large. So it doesn't matter what orientation you're using for your card. It can be horizontal like this one or vertical. Um, you can work it any way. You could even have a larger card if you want to. We're going to use Lucky Clover now. This is such a rich green. And again, because these are Distress inks, you can still see the color that we had first applied, the Wilted Violet and the Picked Raspberry, even if the Lucky Clover winds up on top of it a little bit. It's still going to show. Whereas if you used a pigment ink, 
you would wind up covering that. But I like that the dye inks really make it look like a tie dye. And then I'm going to go in with some peacock feathers and just kind of fill in this area here. Just like that. We've given it a little bit more of a teal tone. I think that's really pretty. Let's add a little bit more. There we go. I think that's perfect. Look at how nice that is. Now we're going to do something a little crazy. Okay. We are going to put away the inks and we're going to do something totally different. This is layer three. And what we're going to do now is I am going to take some paste. And this is going to be the Decofoil Transfer Gel Duo. You can use this with or without a laminating tool. I'm going to be using my die cutting machine. And we're going to apply this paste generously at the top. You're not going to wind up using all of this, but you want it to be pretty generous at the top. And then I'm going to take a paste spreader. I'm just using a metal palette knife right now. And then I'm going to take a paste spreader. And this is a really old one. This is a metal one. There are other ones on the market right now that are silicone. You could even use an old credit card. And then you're going to take this. I'm just kind of making sure I get to the edge. You're going to hold this at a 45 degree angle and just pull. And that should apply the paste in a nice even layer. I have a couple of spots that I've missed over here and at the edge. So I'm going to just lay that back down and then scrape it again. And then all of this excess can go back into the jar. Now you want to be careful because if there is any dye ink on here, then it will color your, your transfer gel. Um, and you want it to not have color in it. So I made sure that I hid that stencil pretty well, or the colors, I should say, that were under the stencil pretty well. So there's nothing there. Okay, and then we're going to lift this up. And once this is dry, in an hour, we can then apply foil to it. And I'm going to go wash off this stencil. You never want to let your transfer gel or any other type of paste dry on your stencil. So I'm going to go wash that my palette knife, and my scraper, and I will see you when this is dry. Okay, our paste is dry. You can see the sheen on there. Looks great. It's nice and sticky. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this gorgeous deco foil from Thermoweb and Brutus Monroe, and I'm going to lay this on top like that, and I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. Okay, I ran it through, and this is the part that everybody loves. This is the peel and reveal. Check that out. Mm. Look at how pretty that is. I love the shine on this. And no heat is required, which I really like, because I don't really use a laminator very often. So now I'm going to just trim off this edge a little bit, and we'll do the next step. Now it's time for our sentiment. So I have this beautiful stamp set from The Greetery called Birthday Blooms, and I have the coordinating die set. And since this hop is all about celebrations, we're going to use that Celebrate stamp. So I have a piece of white cardstock, and I have my VersaFine Claire in Twilight. I love this shade. I use this shade a lot when I don't want to use black, because sometimes black is a little harsh. And you just want some color, but not too bright. And Twilight always seems to fit the bill for me. So I'm going to just put this on a stamping block, open that up, ink this up really well. And then we're going to just apply it to our white cardstock, just like that. And now I'm going to just go and die cut it. Okay, I have my die cut and it came out great. I'm going to apply it here with some on point glue. This is a nice liquid adhesive. Um, you can use dry adhesive, whatever you have at home is perfect. But we're going to just use some liquid so that we have the ability to move it around just a little bit so that we have it in the right spot. 
And you don't need a lot of this glue. A little goes a long way. I'm going to place that there. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to just put a block on top of it. Next, I am going to close up my adhesive because you always want to make sure that that's nice and closed so that the glue doesn't dry in the nozzle. And I think what we're going to do is add a little bit more peacock feathers to the outside edge of this. So I'm going to push this off to the side, bring this up here, and I've got my peacock feathers distressing. And I'm going to just softly buff the color around the edge. Just a little bit. Typically, I like to go in with more of a harsh line and scrape the ink pad directly across the edge of the card. But for this one, I think I want to go a little softer. And the color doesn't have to be perfectly even. I don't need it to be that way. I like some of the areas a little darker than others. But you can do it however you like. There we go. And now our glue should be dry on our sentiment and we can adhere that to the card base. Yep, that's just what it needed. A little bit of blue. Not quite dry yet, but that's okay. Okay. I am applying my ATG gun. I apologize that it's so loud. to get a quieter adhesive, I guess, for these videos. Now I cut this down a little bit, as I mentioned before. So it was four by five and a quarter, and now it's just a little bit less than that, which is okay. Now you may have noticed this lovely bit of shine over here. This is the Grown Up Grape Juice Sparkle Blend from Doodles Paper Playground. And if you've followed me on any type of social media before YouTube, you know that I love using sparkle blends on my card. So we're going to apply a few of these to our card right now. And we're going to also use the on point glue to adhere them. So I'm going to scoop a few of these out and just place them around the sentiment, maybe working my way up or around the spiral here. And it's going to look even better than it did before. I think I want a darker purple. Let's go with this guy. There we go. That's good. Just a few. Sometimes the placement is the hardest part. Do you find that too? Okay, I think that's good. I like it. So now I'm going to open up my on point glue and I have a jewel picker here. This is just from Marvy. This is double ended. I like to use the larger side and I pick it up with the jewel picker. And then I'm just going to apply a small dot of the on point glue underneath each of the sequins. And that's it. Card is done. What do you think? I would like to give a big thanks to Tara and Michelle for including me in their celebration hop. I am so proud of both of you for how far you've come with YouTube so far and I know that you still have many subscribers to come and many amazing videos to come and I'm so excited for both of you. So thank you so much and I am honored to celebrate with you. Make sure that you take a look at my description box below. I'll have links to all of the other hoppers in this fun YouTube hop. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you know every time that I upload a new video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a very inspiring day. Bye.